All right, Accelerate, it is time to roast Pastor Willie. So many of you have sent in some roasts and I'm gonna be reading them today while we are recording. And so we invited our best friends over because who better to read a roast with than your best friends? So, uh, Travis is it's with us today. Support. All right, let's do Don't this. spit your water. If I do, I'm spitting right on them. Here we go, let the roasting begin. Hey, Willie. When you wash your face, how far do you go up? <laughs> All the way. All right, take another drink. Hold on, it's in my nose still. It came out when I snorted like a girl. <laughs> Billy, you're so bald. You look like a corn dog with eyebrows. If I had a face like yours, I'd sue my parents. First of all, who said that one? That was mean. <laughs> Pastor Willie, I get so emotional when you're not around. The emotion's called happiness. <laughs> Did Allie send this? <laughs> Was that Allie? I promise to protect their identity. Man, you look like something I drew with my left hand. <laughs> I think I have Alzheimer's because I can't remember when I asked your opinion. On what? <laughs> I didn't give you an opinion. What doesn't kill you sure disappoints me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my head hurts now. <laughs> really, guys? That's the one you're gonna laugh at? Moral support, my butt. I sure hope karma slaps you in the face before I do. Roses are red, violets are blue. If I had a piece of concrete, I'd throw it at you. <laughs> I know for a fact y'all didn't come up with these. Y'all been searching the web. None of y'all are smart enough to come up with these. I'm not saying I hate you, but I didn't plug your life support to charge my phone. <laughs> Pastor Willie, I would love to insult you, but it looks like nature already did. <laughs> Pastor Willie's like Humpty Dumpty with a beard. But at least if he falls off something, nothing will come out because he doesn't have no brain. Jeez, I thought Nick looked old. <laughs> Are you talking about Nick Housel? He's like 10 years older than me. Roses are red, violets are blue. You smell like donkey that stepped in a poo. <laughs> They should rename you the bald eagle. Make sure you stand next to the heater. Maybe it'll warm up your soul. <laughs> that one just about killed me. <laughs> Willie, it's not Halloween. Take off the mask. You're scaring the kids. Man, I thought nachos were cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
ain't cheesy. It's called creative. I'd like to kick you in the teeth, but why would I improve your looks? I don't know what makes you so stupid, but it really works. <laughs> Last one. I don't want you to turn the other cheek because it's just as ugly. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Accelerate! That's the best you could do? I'm just kidding. Those are pretty good. I want you to know my jokes aren't cheesy. I want you to know this is what I can't say good look looks because I look like a tomato. I'm just saying, or an Easter egg or Humpty Dumpty, whatever. But uh, I guess next uh, next week it's your turn to get roasted. I'm just kidding. All right, see you guys in a sec. What's up, Accelerate? Man, we are excited for our second week of this series called Declaration. Man, all about making a declaration in your life of what you're going to stand for, what you're going to allow in your life, and how you're going to live for God. I'm so excited. Last week, uh, we talked all about Moses and how he needed people to lean on in, in his battles and in, in his uh, getting his victory. And this week, it's all about not being afraid, but being bold. In fact, the title of this week is Not Afraid, But Bold. So the first point is faith or fear. So when we come into, situ into situations, we have to decide, are we going to choose faith or fear? Even if you don't pay attention, man, that's the question you're going to ask every single time. Even if it's not conscious, and even though it may not be that, that you don't stop and go, am I going to choose faith or fear? But in your mind, in a, in a second, you choose faith or fear. Right. Now, we just need to start off with just... When you make a step of faith doesn't mean that you're not afraid at yeah. times. But it means that you're not living in fear and you're not letting fear dictate every circumstance. Yeah. So the opposite of fear is not courage and boldness. Those are byproducts. So those things happen because we walk in faith, then we are courageous, then we are bold. Yeah. The opposite of fear is faith and love. Okay, it says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out all fear. Man, that, that's so good because if you are truly in love with something uh, or in love with God, like there, there will not be fear. Um, and and it's, it's just that simple. I love according with all my heart. And man, there is no fear in our relationship. Now, there's strife sometimes. There's <laughs> fights sometimes. But I don't have any fear that tells me uh, that I should be worried about what's going on in her life. Um, man, a couple weeks ago we talked about how you can't base a decision that you're about to do on fear. Right. You have to choose love and you have to choose faith. Yeah. So fear-based decisions are made by sight. So you look at the situation and basically you freak out. And you decide, I'm going to be afraid and this is how I'm going to react out of fear instead of thinking back into the situation and saying, okay, what does the Bible say about this kind of situation? Or what does God say my next step should be? So you cannot make decisions based on fear. Yeah. Okay. You have to make them out of faith in knowing who you are as a believer and knowing what God has promised in his word when you come into situations that are scary. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we live by faith, not by sight. That means sometimes the situation's going to look out of control. The situation's going to look really scary. And we have to, as believers, as Christians, as followers of Christ, decide, I'm not going to live in fear. This is not going to dictate me. It is not going to be a giant like we talked about weeks ago. It's not going to be a giant that overtakes me. Yeah. This is something that I know that God has control of, and I'm going to have faith in the fact that God is going to take care of it. Man, I love, we say every single week that it's a decision or it's a choice. That's because, like, 
we can't decide for you right. what you're going to do. Your parents you, can't decide. Your that parents for you. can't, uh, and senior pastors can't. Uh, your teachers can't. Your coaches can't. You have to decide. Right. This is a you choice, um, and all of these things come down simply to what are you going to do. And, and so that that first point, fear or faith, man, it's a it's a choice that you're going to have to decide. Yeah. It's in an your individual, life. personal choice. Absolutely. And our second point that we want to talk about is a life of faith is not lived by what we see, but what God sees. Man, the best story in the Bible, and, and man, I love this guy. He's not my favorite guy in the Bible, <laughs> but, but he, man. But his story is great. His story is so cool, and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but the story is, is Gideon. And man, if you want to read the whole story, it's in Judges 6, 11 through 16. It, it might go a little further than that, but right. man, it's all about this guy named Gideon. Now, Gideon, uh, when you read about it, he's the youngest brother in the weakest clan in the weakest nation of the time. <laughs> like, he truly was the weakest. Like, And it, it talks about how he was in a wine press. He was down in a wine cellar uh, shifting out wheat or Finding the wheat out of out of its stalks and men. If you know anything about doing that by hand, I don't. I've seen it done. <laughs> but you need the wind to blow away the dry. And so in a wine cellar, you're not going to find wind. Um, but that's where where he was. Now he took a break and he and he came up and he saw an angel underneath a tree. And the angel called to him and said, "Hey, mighty man of valor." Now, I just told you that he was the weakest in the nation, or weakest, youngest and weakest brother, or weakest family in his tribe, weakest nation. Like, yeah. And to him, the cards were not in his favor. <laughs> <laughs> to him, he was not a mighty man of valor. In fact, he was something complete opposite of that. Um, but God saw what was inside of him and the potential that was right. inside of him. Uh, and he had a choice in that moment to believe that God has a plan for him or to say, oh, I think you've got the wrong guy. Now, he did go through a, a small phase of, are you Denial. sure, God? Like, are you sure? And, and he even, like, put out, man, we're not supposed to tempt God or, or to try. Well, we can try God, but we're not supposed to <laughs> tempt him. But he did some trials for God with some lambskin. And he said, okay, make it rain, but let the lambskin stay dry. And, man, God did that. He, he said, okay. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I believe it completely. Why don't right. you make everything else around it dry and it only rain? So the next day God did that. Like, man, he he tried God to know that God was going to take care of him. Right. But And God proved himself. Yeah, every time God proved himself. Yeah. And so, man, Gideon, he saw himself as somebody that was weak. But God saw, man, that he was mighty. And he, he would come out and deliver the Israelites from the Midianites. Like, yeah. and, and here's the thing. It wasn't through his own strength. Uh, it wasn't through, uh, he didn't go battle himself. Last week we talked about unity. Man, he had to find some guys, and God positioned people in, right. his, in his life that, that would then overtake the Midianites. But, man, God saw what Gideon was supposed to be. Right. Gideon saw what he was at the moment. And Gideon had the choice to say, you know what? I, I see that I might be living in fear right now. And I see that I might be struggling right now. I see that, that I'm called the weakest. I'm the weakest tribe. I'm the weakest. In the, like, I see all of that. But God has called me a mighty man of valor. Therefore, I'm going to stand up and do that. And I'm going to be what God's called me to be. He basically decided to trust God more than his emotions. And that has to be a conscious choice. Yeah. You have to choose no matter how I'm feeling about myself. I can't find my identity in my emotions. Yeah, we are emotional cannot. beings. She is definitely emotional. <laughs> and so we can't depend on our emotions to yeah. help us define our character and what God's called yeah. us to do. And so we have to find that in God and in his word. So you have to decide what are you letting define you. Yeah. So point number three is your declarations define you. And so yeah. what you're saying about yourself, what you're, what you're allowing to define you, 
um, and your image and how you see yourself and how you carry yourself, those things are important. And so you have to really dig into the word of God and, and realize that even if your situation right now is stacked against you, even if things are not ideal, even if there is a, a something going on and you're like, I don't know how God could ever make good yeah. out of this. I don't know how I could ever get out of this. God sees you and he has a plan for you and he's going to make beauty from those ashes that you're in right now. And, and yeah. he can do it, but you have to trust him and you have to find your identity in him. You yeah. have to dig into his word and realize that you are a child of God. You are precious and he loves you so much. And you have to start saying those things to yourself because your emotions yeah. can sometimes drown out That's good. what God is saying to you. That's and really good. Satan wants to do that. He wants to drown out all the things that God is saying and speaking into your life so that you don't reach your full potential. So you have to dig into God's word and really stay firm in an understanding who you are in Christ. Man, I, I'm going to say this point one more time. It's... Your declarations define you. What you say about yourself will come true. And your true. future. Like, I, I'm telling you, if you tell yourself every single day, I'm sad, I'm lonely, I'm depressed, guess what? You're going to be sad, you're going to be lonely, you're going to be depressed. If you say I'm not good enough, guess what? You're going to believe that you are not good enough. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, if you start... Reading the Bible and using what, what God has declared over your life and you start declaring yourself those things, I guarantee right. the things in your life, man, they'll vanish. Because God has called you to win the victory. Yeah. Man, He's called you to win the battles. He's called you to, to succeed. Man, uh, in, in Hebrews 10.39, it says, But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Man, when we decide to shrink back and, and, and get destroyed, and we allow it because it's the choice and we use that as our declaration, mm -hmm. man, those things will happen in your life. Right. If you say I'm defeated, if you say I'm a failure, if you say I'm not good enough or I'm ugly or you name it, right. Those things are going to come true. But if you start looking at yourself and say, God has called me a mighty man of valor. God has called me beautiful. God has called me perfect in his sight. You start claiming that over your life, without a shadow of doubt, those things will come to pass in your life. Because God's word does not turn void. Right. That means God's word doesn't fail. And we, when we choose to, to declare those things over our life, that means the Word of God will not fail in our life. Right, because the Word of God is alive. It's living. And so when you use that, it's going to bring life to your life. It's going to help you walk out the things that God's called you to do. And so for some of you today, you're saying, well, I don't know how to stand on the promises of God, and I don't know how to not be afraid, or I don't know how to live in faith because I've never had faith in anything. Yeah. Like I've never had a relationship with God and I've never dug into God's word to see what he says about me. Like I've always just defined things of how I see them and what my emotions tell me the situation holds. And that's as far as I've ever... Emotions lie. Yeah, they do. Right? And when you allow your emotions to decide, um, man, it's, it's allowing like our first point, it's allowing fear to be the ruler of your, your life instead mm -hmm. of faith in God. Man, if, if you're in that place uh, and you're ready to say, you know what, I'm ready to declare faith in my life yeah. and I'm, I'm ready to declare that I am a child of God and we don't want to pass up the opportunity to allow you to allow Jesus to come in your life. Yeah. Man, so if that's you right now and I want you to close your eyes, bow your head and pray after us. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Today I declare. Today I declare that I am yours. That I am yours. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me new. Wash me new. Make me new. Make me new. I love you. I love you. I give you my life. I give you my life. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. Man, if you made that decision, that's the best decision you could ever make in your life. Tell us about it. Let us celebrate with you. Let us declare life over you. Man, message us, call us, Snapchat us, 
however you want to do it, let us know that you just made that decision and you just made that declaration over your life. And before we go, don't forget that tomorrow night we are going to be on Zoom. Yeah. Make sure you check out our social media or your small group leaders for the link. Uh, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, we're going to play games. We'll have prizes. It's a lot of fun. So if you haven't joined in a Zoom with us, go ahead and do that tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Bye.